Sestina by Algernon Charles Swinburne. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. I saw my soul at rest upon a day as a bird sleeping in the nest of night, among soft leaves that give the starlight way to touch its wings but not its eyes with light, so that it knew as one in visions may and knew not as men waking of delight. This was the measure of my soul's delight. It had no power of joy to fly by day, nor part in the large lordship of the light, but in a secret moon beholden way had all its will of dreams and pleasant night, and all the love and life that sleepers may. But such life's triumph as men waking may, it might not have to feed its faint delight between the stars by night and sun by day, shut up with green leaves and a little light because its way was as a lost star's way, a world's not wholly known of day or night. All loves and dreams and sounds and gleams of night made it all music that such minstrels may, and all they had they gave it of delight, but in the full face of the fire of day what place shall be for any starry light, what part of heaven in all the wide sun's way? Yet the soul woke not, sleeping by the way, watched as a nursling of the large-eyed night, and sought no strength nor knowledge of the day, nor closer touch conclusive of delight, nor mightier joy nor truer than dreamers may, nor more of song than they, nor more of light. For who sleeps once and sees the secret light, whereby sleep shows the soul a fairer way between the rise and rest of day and night? shall care no more to fare as all men may but he his place of pain or of delight there shall he dwell beholding night as day song have thy day and take thy fill of light before the night be fallen across thy way sing while he may man hath no long delight end of poem The Complaint of Lisa by Algernon Charles Swinburne. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Decameron, Day Ten, Tale Seven. There is no woman living that draws breath so sad as I, though all things sadden her. There is not one upon life's weariest way who is weary as I am weary of all but death, toward whom I look as looks the sunflower, all day with all his whole soul toward the sun, while in the sun's sight I make moan all day, and all night on my sleepless maiden bed weep, and call out on death, O oh love, and thee, that thou or he would take me to the dead, and know not what thing evil I have done that life should lay such heavy hand on me. Alas, love, what is this thou wouldst with me? What honour shalt thou have to quench my breath, or what shall my heart broken profit thee? O oh, love, O oh, great God, love, what have I done? that thou shouldst hunger so after my death. My heart is harmless as my life's first day. Seek out some false fair woman, and plague her till her tears, even as my tears fill her bed. I am the least flower in thy flowery way. But till my time be come that I be dead, let me live out my flower time in the sun though my leaves shut before the sunflower. O oh, love, 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 the kingly sunflower, shall he the sun hath looked on, look on me, that live down here in shade, out of the sun, here living in the sorrow and shadow of death? Shall he that feeds his heart full of the day care to give mine eyes light, or my lips breath? because she loves him shall my lord love her who is as a worm in my lord's kingly way i shall not see him or know him alive or dead but thou i know thee o oh love 
and pray to thee that in brief while my brief life days be done and the worm quickly make my marriage bed for underground there is no sleepless bed but here since i beheld my sunflower these eyes have slept not seeing all night and day his sun-like eyes and face fronting the sun wherefore if anywhere be any death i would fain find and fold him fast to me that i may sleep with the world's eldest dead with her that died seven centuries since and her that went last night down the night wandering way for this is sleep indeed when labour is done without love without dreams and without breath and without thought o oh, name unnamed of thee ah but forgetting all things shall i thee wilt thou not be as now about my bed there underground as here before the sun shall not thy vision vex me alive and dead thy moving vision without form or breath i read long since the bitter tale of her who read the tale of launcelot on a day and died and had no quiet after death but was moved ever along a weary way lost with her love in the underworld ah me o oh my king o oh my lordly sunflower would god to me too such a thing were done but if such sweet and bitter things be done then flying from life i shall not fly from thee for in that living world without a son thy vision will lay hold upon me dead and meet and mock me and mar my peace in death yet if being wroth god had such pity on her who was a sinner and foolish in her day that even in hell they twain should breathe one breath why should he not in some wise pity me so if i sleep not in my soft straight bed i may look up and see my sunflower as he the sun in some divine strange way o oh, poor my heart well knowest thou in what way this sore sweet evil unto us was done for on a holy and a heavy day i was arisen out of my still small bed to see the night's tilt and one said to me the king and seeing him somewhat stopped my breath and if the girl spake more i heard not her for only i saw what i shall see when dead a kingly flower of nights a sunflower that shone against the sunlight like the sun and like a fire o oh heart consuming thee the fire of love that lights the pyre of death howbeit i shall not die an evil death who have loved in such a sad and sinless way that this my love lord was no shame to thee so when mine eyes are shut against the sun o oh, my soul's sun o oh, the world's sunflower thou nor no man will quite despise me dead and dying i pray with all my low last breath that thy whole life may be as was that day that feast day that made troth plight death and me giving the world light of thy great deeds done and that fair face brightening thy bridal bed that god be good as god hath been to her that all things goodly and glad remain with her all things that make glad life and goodly death that as a bee sucks from a sunflower honey when summer draws delighted breath her soul may drink of thy soul in like way and love make life a fruitful marriage bed where day may bring forth fruits of joy to day 
and night to night till days and nights be dead and as she gives light of her love to thee give thou to her the old glory of days long done and either give some heat of light to me to warm me where i sleep without the sun o oh, sunflower made drunken with the sun o oh, night whose lady's heart draws thine to her great king glad lover i have a word to thee there is a weed lives out of the sun's way hid from the heat deep in the meadow's bed that swoons and whitens at the wind's least breath a flower star-shaped that all a summer day will gaze her soul out on the sunflower for very love till twilight finds her dead but the great sunflower heeds not her poor death knows not when all her loving life is done and so much knows my lord the king of me ay all day long he has no eye for me with golden eye following the golden sun from rose-coloured to purple-pillowed bed from birthplace to the flame-lit place of death from eastern end to western of his way so mine eye follows thee my sunflower so the white star-flower turns and yearns to thee the sick weak weed not well alive or dead trod under foot if any pass by her pale without colour of summer or summer breath in the shrunk shuddering petals that have done no work but love and die before the day but thou to-day to-morrow and every day be glad and great o oh, love whose love slays me thy fervent flower made fruitful from the sun shall drop its golden seed in the world's way that all men thereof nourished shall praise thee for grain and flower and fruit of works well done till thy shed seed o oh, shining sunflower bring forth such growth of the world's garden bed as like the sun shall outlive age and death and yet i would thine heart had heed of her who loves thee alive but not till she be dead come love then quickly and take her utmost breath song speak for me who am dumb as are the dead from my sad bed of tears i send forth thee to fly all day from sun's birth to sun's death down the sun's way after the flying sun for love of her that gave thee wings and breath ere day be done to seek the sunflower end of poem Beside the Sea by R. K. Mankitrick. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. One summer's day I lingered by the sea and watched the wavelets on the bright beach rise. Above the blue gulls circled wild and free, and sun kissed cloud ships flecked the peaceful skies. Ah, Edith, give your pearly hand to me, and let your laughter drown the ocean's sighs. Tis sweet to listen to your tender sighs and think of lovers sailing o'er the sea and looking in those orbs which pale the skies tis sweet to know that both of us are free ah pleasant dreams before my spirit rise look at that corpulent woman doused ah me sweet edith will you swimming go with me or will you waltz o oh, list the music sighs so soft it must charm the clams beneath the sea as it wings swift unto the charmful skies at savoury lunch alas it isn't free to fondest thoughts of cash the same gives rise oh see that fellow drenched and dripping rise and howl and jump twould be the same with me 
the three-card monty man serenely sighs o'er speculations by the sounding sea if such as you sweet dwell beyond the skies to confess the skies are heavenly i am free ah joy your father lets you wander free no vague suspicions in his bosom rise ne'er down the front stoop he assisted me when zephyr round pale roses shed its sighs were i a missionary over the sea my heart would dwell beneath these very skies now vivid lightning leaps across the skies now the rain pours to raise your shade you're free the waves unto the heavens madly rise this is a nice predicament for me thus the average dead broke fellow sighs when he meets by chance a fair friend by the sea Envois. see in the distance clasping fond the skies rise and bear me where all from care are free me edith bounced rare luck my wallet sighs end of poem A Sestina by H. C. Faulkner. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Legend In New Hampshire, near the banks of the Connecticut River, there is a small pond, very deep, and whose water is of a deep crimson colour. The country adjacent, in the colonial days, was occupied by the Abenakai tribe of Indians, who were driven away by the English settlers associated with the pool is the following legend beside the rushing stream that vainly tries to woo the banks away and long has fought with angry floods and unexpected rise to kiss their mossy brows as if it thought to win its prize by passion then swift dies and shuns the heights which it so madly sought within a whispering wood undoubted sought you think by fays and sprites but when one tries to picture it their home the fancy dies for ghostly red as if souls tortured fought to hide beneath and lave their bleeding thought there lurks a pool whence mocking shadows rise from midnight shadows of the pool doth rise an indian girl by peeping moonbeams sought and clad with silver light as if they thought to make the maid more beautiful she tries to still her heart which bleeds as if it fought with some great grief whose memory ne'er dies the maiden fairer than the west where dies the day with plaintive song sings of love's rise and fall how in the olden time there fought against her tribe a youth so fair who sought her love now changed her song a captive tries to conquer conqueror with amorous thought a day he madly loves but when she thought elysium was won his passion dies mad with hot love to win a kiss she tries low kneeling at his feet where ne'er to rise he kills her and her heart-blood streaming sought this pool lost the fierce battle she had fought her traitorous lover sought the pool and fought with his mad dreams to cool his fevered thought he drank exultant to the depths she sought to tempt him lo he falls and struggling dies her song is done and as the sun doth rise he seeth naught but shadows though he tries and to this day they say a mortal dies if faithless to his love and will ne'er arise if stooping there to quench his thirst he tries end of poem cupid and the shepherd by clinton scollard this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. One merry morn, when all the earth was bright, And flushed with dewy dawns in crimsoning ray, A shepherd youth, o'er whose fair face the light Of rosy smiles was ever wont to stray, Roamed through a level grassy mead, Bedight with springtime blossoms, Fragrant, fresh, and gay. But now, alas, his mood was far from gay, 
and musing how the dark world would be bright could he but win his maiden's love and stray with her for ever basking in its light he saw afar in morn's bright beaming ray a lissom boy with archer's arms bedight the boy shot arrows at a tree bedight with red-winged songsters warbling sweet and gay amid the leaves and blossoms blooming bright he seemed an aimless wandering way for stray and so the shepherd caught him stealing light while from his eyes he flashed an angry ray the fair boy pled until a kindly ray shone o'er the shepherd's clouded brow bedight with clustering locks and he said smiling gay i prithee promise by thy face so bright to ne'er again where'er thou mayest stray slay the sweet birds that make so glad the light while yet he spake from out those eyes a light divine shot forth before whose glowing ray the shepherd quailed it was so wondrous bright then well he knew twas cupid coy and gay with all his arts and subtle wiles bedight and knelt in homage lest the boy should stray rise said the god and ere thy footsteps stray know that within her eyes where beamed no light of love for thee i will implant a ray she shall be thine with all her charms bedight the shepherd kissed love's hand then bounded gay to gain his bliss and all the world was bright when naught is bright to those that sadly stray oft times a single ray of eros's light will make all earth bedight with radiance gay end of poem The Voices of Spring by Elizabeth Ackers. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Why is it that the voices of the spring, the bluebird's note, the red breast's mellow call, the sweet, sweet carols which the sparrows sing, the peeping of the frogs at evening's fall, these vague regrets and homesick longings bring to hearts which listen for and love them all all hearts rejoice when winter goes and all are glad to welcome back the tardy spring to hear the woods responding to the call which rough and blustering the march winds sing to mark the showers blossom waking fall and the slight changes which the slow days bring and yet the first soft days are sure to bring a tender sadness with their joy to all for with the new growth buried memories spring as once of old at dread enchantment's call the dead arose and spake how can we sing or smile when tears well up and fain would fall even the lark's voice has a mournful fall his lovely golden breast that seems to bring the sunshine with it and the warmth and all that makes and glorifies the gracious spring is burdened with that long despairing call for one he seeks in vain how can he sing we think of strains which hope was wont to sing in youth's sweet eden land before the fall did to our souls time's bitter wisdom bring and hush the angel voices one and all yet we remember them and every spring catch far and faint the echo of their call never does summer time or autumn call the same soft sadness back the birds may sing flowers fade and ripe october's foliage fall yet not the same strange melancholy bring it is the saddest season of them all the weeping haunted unforgetful spring ah lovely spring though mating bluebirds call and red breasts sing and sparrows song showers fall thy soft hours bring the same sweet pain to all end of poem sestina by florence m burn 
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. When from the portals of her paradise Sweet Eve went forth, an exile with sad heart, She lingered at the thrice-barred gate in tears, And to the guardian of that Eden fair, As on her cheeks there came and went the rose, she weeping mourned the harshness of her fate o oh, angel cried she bitter is the fate that drives me from this fairest paradise and bids me wear life's rue and not its rose give me one flower to lay upon my heart before i wander through far lands less fair and drown all visions of my past in tears she ceased but still flowed fast her silent tears at memory of the waywardness of fate ah thought she young i am tis true and fair but shall i find another paradise then turning once again with trembling heart she spake o oh, angel but a rose one rose within the angel's breast compassion rose at sight of her sad face and falling tears the while her beauty touched his tender heart and knowing well the misery of her fate he gave the flower a rose of paradise because she was so very young and fair and since that time there may be flowers as fair but they must all yield fealty to the rose, the red, red rose that bloomed in paradise, that Eve in exile watered with her tears, the only blossom in her cheerless fate, the one flower in the desert of her heart. And into every mortal's life and heart there come some time, in cloudy days or fair, it matters not, to bless and light his fate for one short space the perfume of the rose and though the after years may bring but tears that moment's pleasure is of paradise o oh, wondrous rose of love most passing fair whate'er our fate in earthly paradise grant that our tears be dewdrops in thy heart End of poem. An Island Pine by Elizabeth Cavazza. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Mrs. Elizabeth Cavazza is the wife of the late Nino Cavazza of Modena, Italy. She is a native of Portland and has written in verse and prose for the Portland Transcript and Portland Press and for various magazines and newspapers upon the promontory stands a pine where the last land is steep against the sea and waters break below upon the shore the years pass by as clouds above his head and tempered by the sun and rain and wind his lonely strength is lifted to the sky and not for any changes of the sky or heat or cold is changed the constant pine but sets his leafage hard against the wind and fed with salt sharp moisture of the sea before the hatred of the storm makes head and stands a sentinel upon the shore and when the sun-seared grass half clothes the shore and floating mists melt in the sapphire sky and birds of the new summer overhead fly to and fro about the ancient pine and the sun's light is broken on the sea as the thin waves are crisped before the wind the pine not moved by fierce or flattering wind all day all night upon the lonely shore as from a citadel looks out to sea where slender pointed masts upon the sky stature and shape of many a kindred pine come up the bay with banners at their head and while the crown of leafage on his head is held on high to meet the ocean wind the mariner will hail the mighty pine 
set as a beacon on the extreme shore and unafraid of darkening of the sky or sullen murmur of the mutinous sea year after year the pine beside the sea has watched the ships sail past the granite head and vanish in the distance of the sky and send no message backward by the wind to him who guards the lonely island shore forever at his post the faithful pine some day the pine shall fall into the sea and on the shore the trees bewail their head while a great wind makes havoc in the sky end of poem Love's Going by Charles W. Coleman, Jr. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Love lies a-sleeping, maiden softly sing, lest he should waken, pluck the falling rose, a brushing against his cheek, her glowing heart, oped to the sun's hot kisses, foolish thing, to list the tale oft told. But summer goes, and all the rose's petals fall apart love lies a-sleeping let the curtains part so that the breeze may lightly to him sing a lullaby the changeful breeze that goes a-whispering through the grass where'er it rose where'er it listeth bound a wilful thing low murmuring sweets from an inconstant heart love lies a-sleeping press the pulsing heart that beats against thy bosom stand apart and stay thine eager breath lest anything should mar his rest the songs that lovers sing the tale the butterfly tells to the rose the low wind to the grass and onward goes love lies a-sleeping ah how swiftly goes the sweet delusion he hath taught thy heart fair maiden pressing to thy breast the rose whose sun-kissed petals sadly fall apart with thy quick breath that rhyme wouldst hear him sing which yesterday seemed such a foolish thing love lies a-sleeping nay for such a thing break not his slumber see how sweetly goes that smile across his lips that will not sing for very wilfulness love hath no heart if he should wake these red ripe lips would part in laughter low to see this ravished rose love lies a-sleeping so the full-blown rose falls to the earth a dead unpitied thing the grasses neath the breeze deep sighing part and sway and as thy warm breath comes and goes in motion with the red tides of thy heart the song is hushed which love was wont to sing love lies a-sleeping thus in dreams he goes strive not to waken him but tell thy heart love lies a-sleeping and he may not sing end of poem An explanatory sestina by Henry Nesgard Johnson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The sestina, a sort of bastard rhyme, is but the work of some poor lovesick fool, whose brain was yearning for a way to tell his love for some fair dame who knew him not. But still it lives, a plague to poets all, who try to imitate his measures wild. One tries it, there, he's getting very wild ah no there really is no lawful rhyme the meter is the only thing at all you'll see how mad in truth the lovesick fool when you succeed the meter it is not but what it is is very hard to tell there is a way in which the scheme to tell that poet drew from out his brain so wild your finals first you cannot change no not one single one from your first stanza's rhyme as where you set them down that ancient fool has said you must retain them one and all the words you keep their order change and all the stanzas there are six i ought to tell have those same six to end the lines our fool who tried to make a measure savage wild says in this order must they go to rhyme if i am never clear how blame me not the first word used in stanza first is not the first one in the next above them all but stands at second place in this odd rhyme the second is the fourth as you can tell the third is then the sixth this poem wild begins to sound just like its author fool then take the fourth a word my friend to fool and put it in fifth place its place is not elsewhere 
the fifth goes in the third tis wild the sixth place in the first and that is all except l'envoi i forgot to tell of three lines only still there's ne'er a rhyme this is oh no not verse that time will tell is fit to roll all down the ages wild but still the bad rhyme will outlive the fool end of poem the stars by agnes mary francis robinson this librivox recording is in the public domain to j d stars in the sky fold upon fold of stars and still beyond the stars those gulfs of air flecked soft and pale with milkier stars beyond millions of miles above our dusky world pale stars whose light down the unplumbed abyss falls ere it reach us through a thousand years there was a god in the unwritten years who lit the flaming order of the stars let there be light he said and lo the abyss grew live and tremulous with a rustling air grew bright with stars and moons and each a world shining a light to other worlds beyond oh were you even as we bright orbs beyond who shine and shed your glory all these years not light but smoke would fall from every world smoke black with human evil black o oh stars with his neglect who lit the sparkling air but left within unformed and void the abyss o oh, stars that dance indifferent in the abyss our earth may seem as bright to you beyond yourselves to them that breathe your delicate air as desolate life in the lunar years is long and the straight rivers of the stars and primal snows divide as drear a world and men perchance as we in every world fill with their dreams the bright and vast abyss a christ has died in vain on all the stars and each unhappy seeks a star beyond where god rewards the dead through endless years and so we circle dumb in the silent air what shall we find more holy in all the air lo when the first huge incandescent world burst out of chaos and flamed a million years until with too much flaming through the abyss flake after flake dropped off and flamed beyond that was the god who lit the host of stars for light the stars for breath the realms of air for hope beyond this dark and suffering world not in the abyss nor aught in the endless years end of poem pulvis et umbra by agnes mary francis robinson this librivox recording is in the public domain along the crowded streets i walk and think how i a shadow pace among the shades for i and all men seem to me unreal foam that the seas of god which cover all cast on the air a moment shadows thrown in moving westward by the moon of death oh shall it set at last that orb of death may any morning follow as i think from one surmise upon another thrown my very thoughts appear to me as shades shades like the prisoning self that bounds them all shades like the transient world and as unreal but other hours there be when i unreal when only i vague in a conscious death move through the mass of men unseen by all i move along their ways i feel and think yet am more light than echoes or the shades that hide me from their stronger bodies thrown 
and better moments come when overthrown all round me lie the ruins of the unreal and momentary world as thin as shades when i alone triumphant over death eternal vast fill with the thoughts i think and with my single soul the frame of all ah for a moment could i grasp it all ah could but i poor wrestler often thrown once grapple with the truth oh then i think assured of which is living which unreal i would not murmur though among the shades my lot were cast among the shades and death one thing is true i said and that is death and yet it may be god disproves it all and death may be a passage from the shades and films on our beclouded senses thrown and death may be a step beyond the unreal towards the thought that answers all i think in vain i think o oh, moon-like thought of death all is unreal beneath thee uncertain all dim moon-ray thrown along a world of shades end of poem Personality by Agnes Mary Frances Robinson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. As one who goes between high garden walls along a road that never has an end, with still the empty way behind, in front, which he must pace forevermore alone. So, even so, is life to every soul walled in with barriers which no love can break and yet ah me how often would we break through fence and fold and overleap the walls to link ourselves to some beloved soul hearing her answering voice until the end going her chosen way no more alone but happy comrades seeing heaven in front but ah the barriers high and still my front i dash against the stones in vain nor break a passage through but still remain alone sometimes i hear across high garden walls a voice the wind brings over or an end of song that sinks like dew into my soul. Since others sing, let me forget, my soul, how dreary long the road goes on in front, and towards how flat, inevitable, an end. Come, let me look for daisies, let me break the jilly flowers that shelter in the walls, but ah, it is so sad to be alone forever irremediably alone not only i or thou but every soul each cased and fastened with invisible walls shall we go mad with it or bear a front of desperate courage doomed to fail and break or trudge in sullen patience till the end ah hope of every heart there is an end an end when each shall be no more alone but strong enough and bold enough to break this prisoning self and find that larger soul neither of thee nor me enthroned in front of time beyond the world's remotest walls i trust the end i sing within my walls sing all alone to bid some listening soul wait till the daybreak watch for me in front end of poem dorothy by annie eliza johnson this librivox recording is in the public domain
bid the winds speak of me where i have dwelt bid the stream's voice of all my soul hath felt a thought restore in twilight land where sleep nor waking is a mystic world from common life apart some presence from a fairer world than this seemed to approach and fill with joy my heart saying at thine unspoken wish i come speak thou for my poor lips so cold and dumb ay for thy sake my lips shall not be dumb o fairest face where such strange beauty is i welcome thee bright vision thou hast come to dwell for ever in my soul apart do thou but grant unto my waiting heart the grace of one more hour as sweet as this smiling she said i came to thee for this no more in lonely silence cold and dumb i dwell my life shall be within thy heart entwined with thine renewed my being is and thou no longer shalt thou dwell apart for at thy lightest bidding i will come the voices of the waves that go and come the winds that blow from other shores to this i knew and loved them for i dwell apart from the far world my heart was sad and dumb and in such solitude no joyance is from my own sorrow i have read thy heart as i recall my home the simple heart of my lost childhood unto me doth come here grew the willows yon the meadow is my sheltering forest fairer was than this where glad birds sang silent to me and dumb all happy sounds from life and love apart yon sandy cove where oft i mused apart the beach so dear to childhood's careless heart still bear my name though i am still and dumb oh let thee speak of me to all who come no earthly haunt so fair and dear as this i go for thee alone mine errand is o oh, silent heart where silence only is here by the sea i wait for thee apart to cheer the gloom of this sad hour come note dorothy youngest daughter of james mills who is one of the earliest inhabitants of nahant a cove and beach still bear her name see lewis's history of lynn end of poem felga and Deathred by harrison robertson this librivox recording is in the public domain once on a time there dwelt seahild a king far to the northward in the icy heart of barren peaks that lift their heads to kiss all passionless the sun their senile love rich booty from the merchant seas he won and with a despot's sceptre ruled the land she who was famed as fairest in the land was princess thelga daughter of the king prized by him more than all the spoils he won gentle and proud till ethred came her heart had never felt the stir of nestled love her lips ne'er known the spasm of love's kiss and old seahild had sworn that such a kiss by all the treasures of the sea or land should never consecrate his daughter's love for any suitor save the blustering king who ruled the realm adjoining and whose heart chaste felga all unwillingly had won hers ethred young and powerless had won unnoted by seahild until a kiss the tyrant caught him stealing then his heart o'erran with rage that one with goods nor land should dare to woo the daughter of a king and balk a brother monarch of his love 
now by my ships he stormed thou sayst thy love by this unfilial damsel has been won i'll prove you then if you can tell your king of aught ha ha that's sweeter than the kiss you gave her dowered with goods and land her hand is yours as is she thinks her heart i can and felga pressed her angered heart as ethred spoke then roared the king your love is false if aught's more sweet in all the land nay ethred said i claim that i have won sweeter than that i gave her was the kiss she gave to me i yield confessed the king ah happy heart the royal largesse won of voluntary love in its one kiss is more than sea or land can give a king End of poem. The Birthday by Richard Garnet. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. December nineteenth, eighteen sixty one. Slow moves the vast procession of the days, some black as night or lit with gladsome sun well by the eye of voyager discerned cast backward through long avenues of time most in dim retrospect not more divined than one mid myriad blades in distant fields yet mid dim crowds amassed in distant fields some day mid myriad inconspicuous days commingled now ere long to be divined with gifts deep sunken as the nadir's sun hath peradventure parting trusted time to cherish till their hour to be discerned day of dear promise not by me discerned why camest thou bound amid the wintry fields to briefest span of sun illumined time who longest as most loved shouldst be of days haply by summer's scent and song and sun the blessing thou didst bear had been divined oh had heart's instinct imminent divined or eyes irradiating glance discerned as spire or column smit by shaft of sun flashes from far across the ample fields fair hadst thou sparkled mid uncheerful days a diadem of light for wintry time but thou hast wended where the abyss of time stores the dead hours not more by me divined than any of the drear unfruitful days till came thy child and i in her discerned light as of starry flowers in heavenly fields in thee a light excelling summer's sun child of mine too by whom december's sun quenches refulgent orbs of summer-time and hides with roses all the wintry fields the past hath held thee as a hope divined the present clasps thee as a bliss discerned by thee the future gilds her promised days days by the dawn of an immortal sun discerned by ecstasy transcending time divined while yet i walk these earthly fields end of poem fra filippo lippi and the nun by mary anna buck evans this librivox recording is in the public domain in proto's convent once there dwelt a nun lucrezia buti wondrous fair and sweet to look upon so full of heavenly love that almost would one think she had begun already that strange life beyond complete which here the wisest crave in realms above thus when a painting new to hang above the convent altar needed this calm nun was chosen that her beauty might complete the picture of the noble lovely sweet madonna that fra lippi had begun 
a man with both his church and art in love a painter monk fra lippi and in love with bright and noble dreams far far above his thoughts when first his painting was begun but as he gazed upon the beauteous nun unconsciously her face and form so sweet his heart thrilled ere his work he could complete he knew it was not right thus to complete his task he knew a baser mortal love would spoil the expression chaste unearthly sweet that look as if of light from heaven above which beamed upon the fair and fragile nun the look he strove to catch and had begun alas that they had met or life begun a look a kiss their ruin was complete from out the convent walls the faithless nun stole softly and away with him her love nor cast one thought to those grey walls above but hastened on to love eternal sweet and did it last ah no its bitter sweet commenced ere her new life had scarce begun too soon he wearied of that look above beyond which once to him seemed so complete but while he toyed with newer fresher love her friend's swift poison venged the forsaken nun a picture spoiled a sweet life wreck complete thus rings the song begun in hope and love above philippo lippi and the nun end of poem An Incident in the Crusades by Mary Anna Buck Evans. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Fierce blazed high noon o'er the crusading host, and in his tent, borne down by summer's sun, lay Edward, Prince of England, strongest hope of lords and commons, for he best had learned those lessons of self government long taught by Simon Montfort magna carta's friend and as he slept there came in guise of friend with message from the saracenic host a low-born churl whom his religion taught foul deeds could be accomplished neath the sun yet honour could be kept if rightly learned a vast reward his sole excuse or hope so bowing low to edward in the hope to make him think he truly was a friend he gave his letter edward should have learned to dread each action of the heathen host for reading this and turning toward the sun the ruffian sprang upon him duly taught help help for edward loud the cry but taught with surer skill the monarch placed his hope in his own strong right arm the blazing sun showed where to strike and proved his trusty friend one less was numbered in the hostile host one more the strength of edward's arm had learned alas sad news by him must soon be learned the assassin's steel had touched him and long taught he knew the poison used by that wild host and that it meant swift death beyond all hope adieu to life to home and wife and friend no more for him should rise to-morrow's sun then eleanor the truest wife the sun e'er shone upon came with a secret learned long since from one who fain would be her friend she threw herself beside her lord and taught her lips to draw the poison out and hope with life returned to edward and his host ah where the host beneath whatever sun with braver tale of wifely hope thus learned hail eleanor love taught the king's best friend end of poem drake and the ransom of san domingo fifteen eighty five by mary anna buck evans 
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Bring forth your treasures, quoth the sailor bold, for England needs them all, and in her cause I stand today. No Spaniard shall escape from paying tribute, which is fairly due to English prowess on the swelling sea as on the lands that know her mighty force but though determined to resort to force if needful yet i am not overbold no wild and harsh freebooter of the sea am i and if you recognize the cause is just and give us what indeed is due to conquerors i swear you shall escape the magistrates considered this escape well knowing all the violence and force which could be brought to bear as justly due to any one who dared to be so bold as e'en to question by what right or cause came this demand from rovers of the sea they waited hoping that across the sea might come from spain some chance of their escape some partial help to aid them in their cause but nothing came and in despair the force of vengeance was the only thought these bold and hardy spaniards felt their right and due and so they took the messenger then due sent under flag of truce which from the sea demanded toll and struck and killed the bold and daring lad who could not then escape ah bitterly they rued this act of force and sadly did it work against their cause for drake slew many spaniards for this cause and felt that fearful ransom was his due when finally they yielded to his force and paid a mighty sum which o'er the sea was carried to queen bess yet their escape from further ills they owed to drake the bold the world still calls him bold commends his cause lets him escape all blame such was the dew of rovers of the sea who ruled by force end of poem the things i love by john lawrence smith this librivox recording is in the public domain in springtime mild i love to catch the gleam of sun darts wakening brooks from wintry sleep and loiter where the purling waters glide where balmy airs with flowers perfumeries blend the time that birds sing sweet in mutual love and emerald earth with promise large doth bless to wander through the woodland dank to bless the charms that thrall me watch the sunfish gleam in smiling pools the robins making love the whippoorwill and owl disturb their sleep the murmuring hum of bees harmonious blend with my own thought into my being glide at twilight's pensive hour how sweet to glide beyond the carking cares of day and bless this time in which my past and present blend that wonder-working hour we watch the gleam of other worlds and ask do people love and dream in those and wake from endless sleep the pleasures of my books e'en in my sleep i con again the classic tomes which glide like essence rare into my soul like love sage homer dante mild petrarch to bless shakespeare sublime and milton grand the gleam of arthur's knights with tennysonian splendours blend and music sweet whose modest measures blend with pensive thought and lull the babe to sleep in arms maternal and then to note the gleam o'er the devoted mother's features glide unto the cherub that has come to bless our lives and bind our hearts in fervent love with her to whom my heart is linked in love what joy i find with sweet communings blend our hearts and fill our lives with joys that bless a quiet tranquil life with restful sleep is ours thus down life's stream we hopeful glide 
until the portals passed where joys supernal gleam these are the joys i love and dream in sleep of hopes that blend with holy thoughts and glide to realms where god doth bless with crowns that gleam and a poem Sestina by Timothy Barrett. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The apple blossoms were falling again. We were lingering in the orchard sweet, filled with the quickening odor of rain, with the clover low bending under our feet, and the faint low hush of a night of pain crept through the orchard where seasons meet for we stood together in the springtime sweet after the fall of the winter rain the day that was passing with winged feet had merged in a night of sleepless pain that comes with the parting when lovers meet never to meet in the may again still the blossoms were falling like whitened rain and clung to the clover that twined our feet the word low spoken and whispered again the love tale broken by kisses sweet ah never a thought of the perilous pain the seas that madden the seas that meet the years that have fled have worn my feet and the apple blossoms are falling again in the same old fashion when seasons meet and i hear the song of the rain sung in the leaves of the clover sweet in a season of sorrow and pain the wet waste weather of winter and pain is lost in the march of eternity's feet only to come with the desolate rain when the dawn and the sunset meet so the clover is bending and singing again and the blossoms are blooming and sweet here will i linger but never will meet my lost love waiting in pleasure and pain till the clover has faded beneath my feet till the golden apples have fallen again till the tired eyes close in the midnight sweet that leaves her sleeping beneath the rain oh seas that madden with perilous pain white be thy waters with blossoms sweet i sail to my tryst again end of poem Sestina of the Tramp Royal, 1896, by Rudyard Kipling. Speaking in general, I have tried them all, the happy roads that take you o'er the world. Speaking in general, I have found them good for such as cannot use one bed too long, but must get ends the same as I have done, and go observing matters till they die. What do it matter where or how we die, so long as we've our health to watch it all? the different ways that different things are done and men and women lovin in this world taking our chances as they come along and when they ain't pretendin they are good in cash or credit no it aren't no good you have to have the abbot or you'd die unless you lived your life but one day long nor didn't prophesy nor fret at all but drew your tucker somehow from the world and never bothered what you might have done but god what things are they i haven't done I've turned my hand to most and turned it good in various situations round the world for him that doth not work must surely die but that's no reason man should labour all his life on one same shift life's none so long therefore from job to job i've moved along pay couldn't hold me when my time was done for something in my head upset me all till i had dropped whatever twas for good and out to sea behold the dock lights die and met my mate the wind that tramps the world 
it's like a book i think this blooming world which you can read and care for just so long but presently you feel that you will die unless you get the page you're readin done and turn another likely not so good but what you're after is to turn em all god bless this world whatever she hath done except when awful long i found it good so right before i die he liked it all end of poem Sestina of the Red Heart and White World by John William Lloyd. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. My songs have breathed the music oft of love, and oft intoned a lyric for the free, and often chanted nature and her charm. But now I sing the Red Heart's purpose great, and sing the white world that this shall become, when men count manhood more than things that serve. When men count manhood more than things that serve, we shall not need, I trow, to speak of love. For, certes, to fit souls sweet love shall come in nature's course, when first the way is free. But most of all to those whose thoughts are great, and least to jealous ones who prison charm. Monopoly of land and love and charm, and lust of power unpaid to make men serve these are the things which are not truly great and yet this dark world yields them all its love and mocks at those who prophesy the free and says neath heaven the white things cannot come yet when the red heart beats shall surely come the white world with its peace and health and charm its comrades working side by side yet free each other serving yet unforced to serve its daily life a garden wherein love blooms large and each man's genius ripens great when each man's selfhood grows to ripeness great root based in nature whence all ripe things come its bud and fruiting i the genius love of perfect skill in dainty feats that charm and true success in sterner works that serve art shall be all delightful being free i see my song return to all things free it finds no other theme so truly great nature alone in freedom may i serve it shall be so with all when white days come wherein no deed of mastership may charm nor coldness check the red heart's crimson love comrades be free and then the white shall come life's commonplace grow great and rich in charm and all hearts red to serve with human love end of poem sestina by charles camp torelli this librivox recording is in the public domain as in the stately march of arnaud's song through line on line the same repeated words run through their changing order and return so from the darkness and the silence cast on unknown shores we pass through shifting scenes back to the dark and silent world of death trembling upon the verge of life and death an inarticulate wail begins our song we learn to love the soon familiar scenes to smile upon and greet with stammering words the tender souls with whom our lot is cast the sights that come and vanish and return the seasons in their sure and swift return conduct us on the road whose end is death and sun and shadow on our way are cast love laughter tears and joy and dance and song give changing matter to our changing words and faces new surround us and new scenes yet though we change our fortunes and our scenes the same delights and the same cares return and still our deepest thoughts and lightest words harp on the same deep themes of life and death and the same notes are heard in all our song in changing sequence and new measures cast and as we move a wistful look we cast on the dear faces and the cherished scenes that soon no more shall listen to our song that soon shall vanish never to return and more and more the solemn thought of death broods on our heart and lingers in our words 
ah impotent and vain are all our words the day must come for us to be outcast and banished in the final doom of death and though amid the old unchanging scenes still the same sights and sounds endless return yet do we love this life that fills our song no less the song must cease in trembling words when we return to silence or are cast among new scenes beyond the blank of death end of poem Cestina, the higher scepticism by charles camp tarelli this librivox recording is in the public domain with stumbling feet under dark skies of doubt i labour in the rugged way of truth cheered only by bright dreams that are but dreams and brief rays from the clouded moon of faith and pressing to my heart the lamp of love that haply i may reach the feet of god or might i look upon the face of god with glad eyes unafraid undimmed by doubt and drink deep potions of immortal love and see the perfect lineaments of truth might i but win again my childish faith and lull my thoughts asleep with pleasant dreams how happy was i when i lived in dreams and dreaming grasped the outstretched hand of god unquestioning unwavering in my faith and knowing not the dreaded name of doubt unvexed by thoughts of what and where is truth nor fearing death might be the end of love now even in the tender joy of love i tremble chased and held by hovering dreams that point me to a skull and call it truth and to a wild world blank and bare of god holding no answer to my weary doubt no light no warmth to feed my sinking faith with longing eyes i see the simple faith the life of common cares and kindly love of gentle souls unharassed by black doubt oh might i share their hope and dream their dreams and kneel with them and pray to the dear god and know the comfort of their word of truth but no to try all paths in quest of truth not dwelling in walled creeds to hold no faith save what my own clear spirit draws from god to wear no fetters but the bonds of love no way but this to scatter evil dreams and ride with hope upon the waves of doubt for surely doubt is but the sword of truth fatal to dreams the guard of manly faith the test of love and what is love but god end of poem cestina the adventurers by charles camp torelli this librivox recording is in the public domain hoist every sail on on into the deep into the deep where many voices call caressing voices singing round our bark stern voices of the thunder and the storm strange voices whispering secret words of god far o'er the seas from some remoter shore the timorous friends who watch us from the shore would daunt us with the perils of the deep tempt not they cry the dreadful hand of god stay stay with us the well-loved voices call ah see ye not the gathering of the storm that waits to tear and rend your staggering bark light in the breeze with swelling sails our bark bounds with the waves that bear her from the shore our hearts are bold to meet the fiercest storm and glad to ride the vast long heaving deep bright in the sun we need no hindering call free of the wide untravelled realm of god within our valiant breasts the voice of god sounds grave and sweet and all about our bark the gleaming waves the broad-winged birds that call the breaking surge upon the distant shore and all the murmur of the moving deep seem voices of the power that rules the storm now comes the night and with the night the storm blots from the lonely sky the stars of god and wakes the slumbering fury of the deep horror and death ride black above our bark no lights are seen from any friendly shore no help is near to answer to our call but ever following some far-heard call fearless and swift we sail in sun and storm through unknown seas on many a strange new shore we touch but stay not dwelling still with god in no walled town but in our tight-built bark floating secure upon the floating deep across the deep mysterious voices call and when our bark shall pass beyond the storm it may be god will greet us from the shore end of poem
to the forest by eugene lee hamilton this librivox recording is in the public domain o oh, forest dim mysterious rustling forest the shelter of uncounted generations where life and death war ever each triumphant the sun above and underneath the twilight wherein is wrought the alchemy of seasons the dream the song the cruelty of nature where be the unremembered generations that once were men with pulses strong triumphant but now are ghosts conceived but in the twilight who trod these woods each for its few short seasons singing its hymn to god or gods of nature and dropping like the leaves that strew the forest lo here art never came to stand triumphant to tell us of dead nations lost in twilight and teach their ended story of a season but in its wild monotonous life of nature like ocean the unchangeable the forest outlives forgets and hides the generations i love to watch thee in the leafy twilight working in silent patience at the seasons with unseen unheard forces old in nature or hear the living harp o oh, lyric forest with which thou hast enchanted generations in tones now weird now joyous and triumphant the winds sweep by blind servants of the seasons caressing all the lightest things in nature the heathers ferns and harebells of the forest felling the oak the pride of generations the monarch that defied the years triumphant and sheltered its dumb children in the twilight oh there is nothing in eternal nature save ocean half so thrilling as the forest so full of charm to fleeting generations outliving life outliving death triumphant ineffable in sunshine and in twilight inscrutable in all its wondrous seasons so fill the forest dreams of generations come mystery triumphant born of twilight and pleasure that pain seasons through all nature end of poem homes by charlotte perkins gilman this librivox recording is in the public domain we are the smiling comfortable homes with happy families enthroned therein where baby souls are brought to meet the world where women end their duties and desires for which men labour as the goal of life that people worship now instead of god do we not teach the child to worship god whose soul's young range is bounded by the homes of those he loves and where he learns that life is all constrained to serve the wants therein domestic needs and personal desires these are the early limits of his world and are we not the woman's perfect world prescribed by nature and ordained of god beyond which she can have no right desires no need for service other than in homes for doth she not bring up her young therein and is not rearing young the end of life and man what other need hath he in life than to go forth and labour in the world and struggle sore with other men therein not to serve other men nor yet his god but to maintain these comfortable homes the end of all a normal man's desires shall not the soul's most measureless desires learn that the very flower and fruit of life lies all attained in comfortable homes with which life's purpose is to dot the world 
and consummate the utmost will of god by sitting down to eat and drink therein yea in the processes that work therein fulfilment of our natural desires surely man finds the proof that mighty god for to maintain and reproduce his life created him and set him in the world and this high end is best attained in homes are we not homes and is not all therein ring dry the world to meet our wide desires we crown all life we are the aim of god end of poem the bowling world by charlotte perkins gilman this librivox recording is in the public domain be not impatient with the bowling world the clatter of wild newsmongers the cry of those in pulpits the incessant speech from many platforms and the various prayers of tale-tellers all striving for our ears and poets that wail and gibber they have cause for all this noise there is a natural cause most natural of all that move the world the one that first assails a mother's ears when loud a lusty infant learns to cry an inarticulate insistent prayer but serving that first need as well as speech reason and love combine to give us speech but this loud outcry has a simpler cause the same that prompts the roaming jackal's prayer and fills the forests of the untamed world with one long jarring hungry piteous cry such cry as still attacks our weary ears we long for human music in our ears for the clear joy of well-considered speech and the true poet's soul uplifting cry to lead us forward striving for the cause of liberty and light for all the world and hear but this confused insensate prayer vainly we seek to fly this ceaseless prayer to find some silent spot to stop our ears there is no place in all the groaning world where we can live apart from human speech and we while speech is governed by this cause are infants with no language but a cry it is for food that all live creatures cry for food the sparrows or the lions prayer and need of food is the continuing cause of all this deafening tumult in our ears had we our food secure then human speech might make mild music and a wiser world poor hungry world no wonder that you cry elaborate speech reduced to primal prayer to save our ears let us remove the cause end of poem a dream of gold by charlotte perkins gilman this librivox recording is in the public domain this is a nonsense sestina done in alternate lines by c p g and a friend m a l and quite too good to be lost he sat alone encumbered with his gold alone beside the border of the lake and far across the water's shimmering bed he saw a lady in a little boat a lady lovely as a summer dream dreamed in the depths of mild full-mooned night the lady waited till the middle night for she had fell designs upon his gold and meant to linger till he felt a dream sleeping beside the border of the lake and then she planned to leave the little boat and roll him down into a watery bed little she recked of how that beauteous bed would claim her too while the unhappy knight looked down to see the drifting oarless boat the drifting moonlight on the piles of gold the drifting shadows on the level lake and all as vague and silent as a dream soft stole she to him 
noiseless as a dream but he rose up upon his glittering bed and sat there like a lily on a lake and asked her if she'd like to spend the night in sitting there by him to count his gold better than floating broadcast in a boat she answered him that she preferred the boat and begged him not to interrupt her dream stating that she had only thought of gold when tossing wearily upon her bed in indigestive watches of the night there in her lonely bower beside the lake but he maintained she ought to like the lake and softly beckoned her into the boat and drowned her in the middle of the night and then returned to dimly drowse and dream there on the margin in his shining bed all lit and glimmering with plenteous gold sweet is much gold and sweet a lovely lake better a lady in her bed than boat and the best dreams are those that fly by night end of poem Cestina by Annie Lake Townsend. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Back, salt and bitter fountain of my tears, thou Mara in the desert of my heart, hast thou slept, sealed and bound these many years, now into passionate flood tide to start, now when the hour of restfulness appears, now when fair love has bid all care depart? once into exile me fate bade depart unblest i fared incapable of tears still in sleep broken by convulsive start i live in dreams again those weary years though from those bitter days that racked my heart no shadow now upon my calm appears to-day the current of my life appears smooth as a summer wasted brook depart full lightly down time's sunny slope the years yet yet for slightest cause my wayward heart burns and brims over with these torturing tears the lax chords into strange vibrations start i urge my mind's swift coursers to the start perversely bitterly beloved appears ambition's thong cutting the wretched heart the race begins the blinding mist of tears would dim the goal the chariot wheels depart hail to the future farewell vanished years but stronger than oblivion stand the years on whose gold background at a word will start the stately face where that strong love appears that kept me like a fortress i depart down life's wild road but deeper than all tears that love throbs living in my stormy heart and but for that i would have slain thee heart no helper thou to these my working years the grasp the poise the force of thought depart when thine inexorable claim appears an iron nerve shall yet control thy start and a sealed stone the fountain of my tears sad source of tears the weakness of my heart at this new start where all so vague appears with the lost years i bid thee hence depart end of poem in the autumn woods by charles edward russell this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. When the sun, low down, looks red and round across the dreaming autumn haze, and brown leaves tinkle along the ground, and brown birds pipe in the forest ways, when dulled seems every common sound to a far off sense of lost summer days then the nights are as lovely as the days if chance the moon be full and round and stainless shines through deserted ways where the boughs are traced on the leaf-strewn ground and the winds have cleared the hovering haze 
scarcely moving without a sound and here is music but never a sound the voiceless requiem of perished days and of life that has finished its dust and drowned in the sad hued trees and the lonely ways sighing and mourning above the ground wrapped in their mantles of dreaming haze for the strangest tints has this marvellous haze colours that seem but the echoes of sound tunes and chords in wonderful ways as slowly it drifts the great hill around red as the songs of summer days purple as strains of the autumn ground sometimes it lies lovingly close to the ground this lingering lover the tinted haze till a stray breeze scatters it round and round or the noontide frights it up valley ways where it hushes the lisp of the thin brook's sound with a chilling whisper of frost-bound days ah slow is the march of the nights and days crimson or gold on the yellow ground and yet too soon all the tender haze dies when the bugles of winter sound hark from the depths of the hilltop ways ring the first notes of his choral round hence lady hark round the shadowy ways through the autumn haze on the mournful ground the dead leaves sound but of vanished days End of poem. Sestina by Post Wheeler. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. In every day the sunshine of her eyes, in every night the darkness of her hair. I see her when the morning comes in fire, when the slow eve falls over my desire, and the long dark that empties out my sighs in every day the sunshine of her eyes in every night the darkness of her hair in every moon the glory of her smile i know no time no happening no place no sleep no waking save but by her face nor any thought at all but she is there in every night the darkness of her hair in every moon the glory of her smile in every leaf the whisper of her feet Oh, life could hold no other joy than this, To know the prison of her arms and kiss, That I have wanted all this weary while, In every moon the glory of her smile. In every leaf the whisper of her feet, Day's brightness and night's shadow and moon's smile, All intimate of her. Dear death, how still the world is when it's empty, Neath the hill that little stone, And how my pulses beat, in every leaf the whisper of her feet end of poem sestina of youth and age by gellert burgess this librivox recording is in the public domain my father died when i was all too young and he too old too crowded with his care for me to know he knew my hot fierce hopes youth sees wide chasms between itself and age how could i think he too had lived my life my dreams were all of war and his of rest and so he sleeps please god at last at rest and it may be with soul refreshed more young than when he left me for that other life free for a while at least from that old care the hard relentless torturer of his age that cooled his youth and bridled all his hopes for well, now i know he had the longing hopes the wild desires of youth and all the rest of my ambitions ere he came to age he too was bold when he was free and young had i but known that he could feel and care how could i know the secret of his life in my own youth i see his early life so reckless and so full of flaming hopes i see him jubilant without a care the days too short and grudging time for rest he knew the wild delight of being young 
shall i too know the calmer joys of age his words come back to mind me of that age when lovingly he watched my broadening life and dreaming of the days when he was young smiled at my joys and shared my fears and hopes his words still live for in my heart they rest too few not to be kept with jealous care ah little did i know how he could care that in my youth lay joys to comfort age not in this world for him was granted rest but as he lived in me a happier life he prayed more earnestly to win my hopes than ever for his own when he was young envoy he once was young i too must fight with care he knew my hopes and i must share his age god grant my life be worthy too of rest End of poem. New Hope by Charles F. Johnson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. December comes with bitter blast, the cruel, ruthless winter wind, and all sweet summer's bloom is past. But summer's hope will ever last, although the icy shroud may bind the earth whose heart it cannot find after the snows the sun will find and quicken seeds cold cannot blast the life that earth's deep heart doth bind is stronger than the northern wind through changing years unchanged at last till springs and winters all are past what though the autumn days are past the future hours will surely find the next year better than the last the summer's breath succeeds the blast of icy winter's arctic wind nor suffers long the frost to bind earth's pulsing life no frost can bind with feeble fetters of the past the springtime's re-inspiring wind the bud the flower the fruit will find when hushed is loud december's blast the fiercest winter cannot last but buried by the hours at last will be foredone the wreaths which bind spring's robes are stirred by no rude blast the zephyr's breath which over past leaves no leaf torn will never find the cold caress of winter wind so in the bracing winter wind harsh while its icy rigours last by faith the summer's air we find and though december's frost may bind december's world it soon is past and we forget the winter's blast blow then o oh blast of polar wind in days soon past chill while they last and black frosts bind new hope we find end of poem Sestina by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. I wandered o'er the vast green plains of youth and searched for pleasure. On a distant height, fame's silhouette stood sharp against the skies. Beyond vast crowds that thronged a broad highway, I caught the glimmer of a golden goal, while from a blooming bower smiled siren love straight gazing in her eyes i laughed at love with all the haughty insolence of youth as past her bower i strode to seek my goal now will i climb to glory's dizzy height i said for there above the common way doth pleasure dwell companioned by the skies but when i reached that summit near the skies so far from man i seemed so far from love not here i cried doth pleasure find her way seen from the distant borderland of youth fame smiles upon us from her sun-kissed height but frowns in shadows when we reach the goal then were mine eyes fixed on that glittering goal dear to all sense sunk souls beneath the skies gold tempts the artist from the lofty height gold leers the maiden from the arms of love gold buys the fresh ingenuous heart of youth and gold i said will show me pleasure's way but ah 
the soil and discord of that way where savage hordes rushed headlong to the goal dead to the best impulses of their youth blind to the azure beauty of the skies dulled to the voice of conscience and of love they wandered far from truth's eternal height then truth spoke to me from that noble height saying thou didst pass pleasure on the way she with the yearning eyes so full of love whom thou disdained to seek for glory's goal two blending paths beneath god's arching skies lead straight to pleasure ah blind heart of youth not up fame's height not toward the base god's goal doth pleasure make her way but neath calm skies where duty walks with love in endless youth end of poem rebel chimes by r dean foster this librivox recording is in the public domain suggested by the ringing of the chimes in st martin's in fields a f go soothing slumber flushed with rest i wake to know the ravishment of rebel rhymes and by your leave the liberty i take as hitherto my joy a score of times to note the melody these brass tongues make when in the glory of their wildest chimes sestina by your grace my point i'll make your very form is brimming rich with chimes alluring me to follow in your wake and dance at your behest at divers times such ragged rugged zigzag roads you take while scattering your crazy rebel rhymes o oh, fragrant tune rare heritage of rhymes the kind these rebel six line stanzas make i grasp the bell rope presto hear the chimes soft laughing tripping melody they make ring out ye slaves ring out a billion times and music from the soul of chaos take to yield ecstatic melody you take a compliment of luscious stirring rhymes now in the pathless realm of panic wake the slumbering tongues of pan's arcadian chimes and these you mingle deftly till you make the sprites go drunk with melody by times the art that most intoxicates by times and of its slaves advantage strives to take is music that that rides the untamed rhymes yet may be tamed and it were ours to make and harness it with rare transporting chimes whose brazen throats the bliss of passion wake old dead world wake in rapture laugh by times repeat your rhymes and bolder measure take keen joy to make ring out ye rebel chimes end of poem sestina by victor rees this librivox recording is in the public domain i rested in the shadow of a dream and idly watched the ebb and flow of thought i sat in some half-conscious shadow land where gleams of hidden things flit through the mind i saw the dawn of mirth the end of woe and revelled in the fond delights of love and there amid the ecstasy of love i wandered slowly down the banks of dream those banks that shadows never shade with woe and o'er whose paths no mean or selfish thought e'er goes on servile errands to the mind for love endures no baseness in that land and then i journeyed over sea and land but never saw i aught so sweet as love philosophies the children of the mind seemed but the idle nothings of a dream vain spectres of some dark malignant thought fit messengers for misery and woe wherever love was not there saw i woe and fled in fear as from a hostile land for well i knew that some malicious thought would strive to lead me from the ways of love and try to cast me in some dungeoned dream 
where madness wreaks its tortures on the mind but love i knew ne'er wrought upon the mind save to dispel the wretched thoughts of woe or else to weave life's pathway like a dream that winds its way to some sweet fairy land where every heart proclaims the rule of love and there forgets the vagaries of thought yes i now knew that what man termed as thought was heresy born of unloving mind for i had sensed the unseen soul of love and seen its grand triumphal over woe i knew that love was lord of every land the wizard weaver of each noble dream o oh, love defend my waking hours from woe and lead my stumbling feet unto that land where your sweet labours realise my dream end of poem Sestina, a song in winter by w m james alpha lambda and lambda in years gone by when garland laden spring with many a petal wrought of fragrant snow provence's orchards clad did or no sing in that strange rhyme he wrought so long ago of love and lover's lips that ever cling whereby his lady his true love might know and though my rhyme be faltering this i know that i may live again a bygone spring and all the memories of long ago in song the while of thee dear heart i sing when winter reigns in royal garb of snow and field and stream in his embraces cling and yet the tendrils of the ivy cling around that old dial we used to know which in a far vanished arcadian spring the sunny hours counted long ago dial and ivy and this song i sing remain all else is quiet neath the snow o'er all the garden lies the winter snow the trellised arbours where dead rose vines cling are bleak and bare and never may i know again in them the tender touch of spring their roses are all withered long ago and only of a memory may i sing in truth it seems but little worth to sing when thou art sleeping under this white snow never again to hear the voice of spring never again her scented air to know yet in this rhyme of our now i may cling to a dead love and dream of long ago and so of thee and of the long ago when all the world was fair a while i sing nor heed without the weary waste of snow but only to thy fair dream presence cling ah sweet it is once more in dreams to know that thou art with me as of old in spring princess of spring who reigned so long ago the snow of winter falls but while i sing of memories that cling no death i know End of poem. Midsummer's Eve by Stanley Matthews Cleveland. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Slowly the falling of the summer's night has left but darkness, where the golden flow of sunlit rapids filled the air with light where rustling in the wind the willows blow there shows but sombre blackness to the sight and e'en the darkness darker seems to grow where round about some sheltered pool there grow great stately pines as warders of the night adown the fragrant aisles there seem to flow soft streams of music pulsing in the light 
from faint far trumpets that the breezes blow in sea-girt caves i hidden from the sight the moon comes straying bringing into sight the rounded columns whose faint outlines grow to mystic forms imaginings of night and mid their shapes strange elfin dancers flow swaying and bending swirling in the light to witching strains that fairy trumpets blow hither and thither through the dance they blow as light is down that blows across the sight where dandelions in golden armour grow the dancers with a mirth that wakes the night in rhythmic measures through their mazes flow with echoing laughter rippling as the light then silence comes clothed in the purpling light and mutely all the wearied trumpets blow while morning zephyrs waft them from the sight but there amid the pines two bright rings grow the work of tiny feet that danced all night and there between two elfin springlets flow no more shall these alluring measures flow until twelve moons have given the world their light then once again shall fairy welkins blow and once again the dancers charm the sight but now the ring alone remains where grow the stately pines that mingle with the night long shall the night be when the pixies blow as dancers flow their welkins through the light and all the sight shall ever richer grow End of poem. Sestina by Margaret Thomas. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. I would that till my poor frail life had ended, those whom I love had shared the sun with me, that they who ever in my need befriended, or joined the laugh in my infrequent glee, had to the grave with equal footsteps wended that there alone the last farewell might be but they have crossed the limitable sea i tread the shore alone with head low bended and wonder if their spirits blessed and free revisit scenes with which their forms were blended whether from out their far tranquillity one message ever has to earth descended go to your work and do the tasks intended the sun is westering and the swift hours flee their message is that life is quickly ended no record may remain of them or thee no vision has beyond the grave extended the fate they shared we in our turn shall see o oh, trite sad song we have in vain attended a word a whisper from eternity by death love hope and promise are suspended end of poem <laughs>